Women are always gentle and beautiful creatures who illuminate our lives with boundless love and tenderness. But in this video, we will get to know five women of the ugliest creatures on earth. The least that can be said about them is that they are monsters, not humans. Before we continue today's stories, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to get notified when a new video is posted. Let's continue now. 1. Patricia Blackman The crime took place on May 29, 1999 in Dothan, Alabama. Patricia Blackman, 29 years old, called 911 for help as her daughter was not breathing. The team arrived at her home and found Dominique while lying on the bedroom floor. She was only wearing blood-stained socks and a diaper. When the paramedics checked her daughter, she was no more. They also saw some blood on Dominique's chest and a big bump on her head. The paramedics tried to revive Dominique, and they transported her to the Flowers Hospital emergency room, where Dominique would deceased shortly after arriving at the hospital. Dr. Robert had examined Dominique and got to know that she had several contusions and bruises and imprint the shoe sole on the chest. They also observed many old scars and injuries on her body, and most of them were in different healing stages. It was clear that many internal injuries were found on the child's body. Dr. Alfredo Parades found several marks on her upper abdomen, right groin, and lower victim's chest. Her leg was also fractured. The doctors also found the child had many previous injuries along with two broken bones, and all of them were in different healing stages. Dr. Alfredo Parades cleared that Dominique died because of many blunt force wounds on her extremities, abdomen, left buttock area, chest, and head. Not only that, but Parades also found the imprint of a shoe sole on the child's chest that was clearly captured in the picture, which was taken by her doctor. Dr. James Downs, chief medical examiner for the state of Alabama stated that he compared the pictures taken from the child's chest with Patricia Blackman's sandal shoe print, which she was wearing on the same day when this incident took place. Blackman's father-in-law Wayne Johnson told me that she is the only one who takes care of Dominique and was also with her on the same evening of the assassination. The 911 team reached Patricia Blackman home around 9.30 p.m. Her father-in-law also told police that she met Dominique on the same day, and she seemed quite happy and fine. Also, she was playing with her toys. He also confirmed that he left their home around 8 p.m. when both daughter and mother were alone. The team searched Patricia and Blackman house and found bloodstains in the bedroom. Forensic tests also found bloodstains on the child's t-shirt, bed sheet, broken pull cue, broken napkins, and quilt. The blood matched with the child's blood. Patricia Blackman said that her child fell off from her bed in her defense, and numerous injuries were because of this. Judy Watley, one of his colleagues, said that both mother and daughter had a good relationship with each other. One of Blackman's neighbor, Tammy Freeman, stated that she left her kids under Blackman's custody several times. After hearing all the statements, the Ohio 8th District Court confirmed that Patricia Blackman killed her daughter, and they announced a death sentence to her. After the jury's decision, by voting, two out of ten recommended the jury for the death penalty to Blackman. Patricia and Blackman appealed many times to the court, but she was unsuccessful in proving herself innocent every time. Blackman is now on her turn on death row, and these days, she is living in Wetumpka, Alabama, at Tutwiler Prison for Women. 2. Wendy Andriano In the year 1994, January, she married Joseph Andriano and spent a happy married life. They both made their house in Owatuki, Arizona. After some months of their marriage, her husband became sick. Joseph was confirmed with a disease of terminal adenoid cystic carcinoma. He did so many therapies, but nothing worked. His health went down day by day. He went with chemotherapy in the year 2000. Wendy Andriano started a job as an apartment manager and gave birth to two kids. She was unhappy with this tragedy and Andriano's extramarital affairs began with different men. One of their friends asked them to secure their life by purchasing life insurance for Joe Andriano, but they both don't take any action. On October 8, 2000, 
Wendy Andriano started beating his 33 years old husband with the help of a bar stool. She stabbed his neck with the help of a knife. An autopsy report of Joseph shows that she stabbed her husband 23 times. Sodium as eye traces were also found from his body, which is used for killing pesticides. Sodium as eye works in the human body for damaging the brain and heart. Before Joseph died, Andriano called 911 and told them her husband was out of her control. When 911 came to their home and saw the whole scenario, Andriano claimed that she did all this in self-defense. The investigation team did not agree with her statement that her husband abused her as he was not in the condition to abuse her wife. He became so weak after chemotherapy and the poison given by Andriano. She was charged with the first-degree murder of her husband and got arrested by the police. After four years of Joseph's murder, she was in police custody on trial. The trial began on August 23, 2004. All statements were against Andriano. The prosecutors claimed that her motive was clear as she wants benefit for the malpractice claim prompted by giving poison to her husband. Andriano gave a response to all the allegations given by the prosecutors that she did all for self-defense. The prosecutors collected Joseph's friend's statements, and they stated that they never saw Joseph abuse his wife. After nine days of testimony, she said that her husband got to know that I had an affair with different men, and I cheated on him. He was enraged and started beating me, and I stabbed him for saving my life. Andriano was hoping that she will get free from this case as she told in her statement that she was distraught when she got to know that her husband had cancer. The Arizona Supreme Court judge didn't accept Andriano's statement and said she murdered her husband and the jury found Andriano guilty on November 18, 2004. Andriano was sentenced to the death penalty for Joe's murder. Andriano is in Arizona jail on death row. She appeals twice, one in the year 2007 and another one in the year 2012. She claimed that Juan Martinez had betrothed in prosecutorial misconduct. Joseph's mother is still shocked that his wife murdered him, and now she is taking care of his kids. 3. Maureen McDermott Death sentence to local women in the United States is rarely sentenced and executed. The execution of female offenders in the United States is very low. One of the recent examples of death row to women in the U.S. is Maureen McDermott, a former nurse. She has been on death row from California since 1985, almost three decades, for being the mastermind of a murder. She planned the murder of her roommate, the victim, for collecting the mortgage insurance. She convinced someone to help her in this regard and hired two other persons to execute the murder. She wanted to obtain the sole house that she was sharing with the victim and to collect the victim's life insurance of around $100,000. For this purpose, she designated another co-worker of the victim and friend of the defendant who was the actual murderer. The actual murderer hired two other persons for committing the murder. After almost three months, Maureen McDermott was arrested and charged with attempted murder for her financial gain. In 1985, the victim, named Stephen Eldridge, was stabbed to death brutally in the home where he was sharing with Maureen McDermott. Maureen McDermott hired the actual killer Jimmy Luna, who was a former co-worker as well as a friend of Maureen. For executing the murder, Luna hired two brothers called Don Dowley and Marvin. The first attempt was made in March to attack and kill Stephen by Luna, but it was not successful. On April 29th, Maureen told the three that she will keep the front bedroom window open for their entry. They entered the house at 8.15 p.m. and came to know that Stephen is not at home yet. While waiting for him, Maureen asked them to injure her to make the incident appear as robbery. Stephen came home after 10 p.m. and was stabbed repeatedly. Maureen asked them to damage Stephen's private parts to make the incident look like a homosexual murder, decreasing the interest of the police in solving the case. Maureen lost consciousness and called 911. Both Maureen and Stephen were taken to the hospital where she found that her roommate is dead. The investigations unveiled that Maureen planned to kill Stephen for financial gain and owned a $100,000 life insurance policy. In early 1985, the relationship between Maureen and Stephen deteriorated. Stephen was not happy with the unkempt condition of their house and Maureen's pets. 
Maureen was not happy with Stephen's behavior towards her pets. County Deputy Medical Examiner at Los Angeles performed the autopsy testifying that Stephen has been stabbed 44 times, 28 were fatal, along with causing damage to his private parts. Maureen was interrogated several times about the incident. After almost a month on May 23, 1985, Luna was taken into custody for interrogation but after 72 hours he was released. On July 2, 1985, Luna was arrested for attempting to murder Stephen. Maureen was arrested on murder charges in August 1985. Maureen was charged with attempting murder along with a special allegation of being the mastermind of the murder for financial gain. Maureen was sentenced to death. Marvin, after being in custody for long, was granted immunity in exchange for their truth testimony and confession about the murder of Stephen. Dundell was also under custody of the California Youth Authority and was granted immunity as well. Luna was entered in plea agreement by being guilty of the murder and agreed that he will testify the truth for Maureen McDermott prosecution. I am unable to find Maureen McDermott within the California prison system. Either she died or is appealing her sentence from a county jail. 4. Christy Michelle Scott Christy Scott was a 30-year-old woman who lived in Alabama, Russellville, with her 6-year-old son. Christy Michelle is on the death penalty because of the murder of her child as evaluated by the court. Christy Michelle Bray Scott was born in 1978 and lived in Alabama in Russellville. She is now on death row with the conviction of being a murderer. The characteristic was parasite, and the purpose of her mother was to collect the insurance money. She set her house on fire, and smoke inhalation became the reason for her son's death. Christy Michelle Scott was arrested in August 2008 for setting the house on fire to get the insurance money. Her son was six years old who died because of this fire and thermal burns. This was a crime related to setting the house on fire and insurance money, which eventually resulted in her son's death. There were multiple appeals, and in all of these appeals, she was recommended life in prison. During the appeals, it was also stated that her son was alive when the fire happened, and the death was not due to the fire. But this did not resolve the case. In the final appeal, Christy Michelle Scott was declared the murderer of her six-year-old son, named Mason Scott. More than 70 witnesses testified for that, and the death case in chief reviewed the evidence as well. The evidence was testified from the Forensic Alabama Department. When the house fire happened, the four-year-old son Mason was in Scott's bedroom, and he was sleeping. Scott's husband was not home, and after checking the evidence, it was evaluated that the death was due to the smoke and thermal burns. That smoke blocked his airway, and he was choked to death. Finally, it was also evaluated that the house was set on fire by Christy to get the insurance money. The jury was convicted of giving M.S. Scott the life sentence, but the Alabama Supreme Court judge gave the death sentence for M.S. Christy Michelle Scott. After several appeals, the case is still the same, and she is still on death row. 5. Shauna Ford Shauna Ford led the raid into the family's rural Arivica home. The jury will return Tuesday morning, the Pima County Attorney's Office said. Ford was convicted Monday on eight counts, including two counts of murder for the shooting deaths of Raul Flores and his daughter, Brazenia, and the attempted murder of the child's mother, Gina Gonzalez. The attacks were in May 2009. The child and her father were American-born U.S. citizens. The jury also convicted Ford on two counts of aggravated assault and one count each of burglary, armed robbery, and aggravated robbery. Her alleged accomplices, Albert Robert Gaxiola and Jason Eugene Bush are scheduled to go on trial later this year. During the trial, prosecutors portrayed Ford as the ringleader of the hit squad and said she had planned the raid and the murders to steal weapons, money and drugs to finance a new anti-illegal immigration outfit. The trio picked the Flores home, prosecutors said, because of a claim made by Gaxiola that they would find drugs there. While Flores had a history of drug-related offenses, no drugs were found in the house. Posing as Border Patrol and law enforcement officers, Ford, 
Caxiola and Bush, whom prosecutors identified as the gunman, showed up at the florist's home after midnight, several hours after the family had returned from a shopping trip in Tucson to buy shoes for their daughter for summer camp. Brazinia was sleeping on the couch with her puppy when the group demanded to be let into the home. They accused Flores of harboring illegal aliens and said the house was surrounded by agents. Once inside, the gunman shot Flores in the chest and Gonzalez in the leg. Brazinia was later shot as she pleaded for her life. Jewelry taken from the Flores home was later found in Ford's possession. Text messages discovered on her phone also implicated her in the crime. Here we have come to the end of the video. I hope you will leave us a comment about your opinion of those monsters whose stories you heard today. I also hope that you will enjoy peace and love, dear viewer. Thank you for watching.